Hey everyone. So in this video, I wanted to give you an example of how you can use JavaScript debugger from within your custom functions alongside with Chrome developer tools and have a really effective way of debugging your custom functions locally. Let's jump right into an example. So before we get going, one thing I'd like to mention is that if you're trying to debug functions that are in production, the best way of doing that right now is using the console.log method and just consoling out different arguments, objects, or whatever you need to, to the console to see what you are dealing with within the function. However, if you go to docsidebase.com, you can find a little bit more information about debugging. This document might help you maybe with some more specific questions that you might have while watching this video. However, what we're really going to be going over is the local debugging method, which you can start by copying this script to your, the NPM package of your 8Base project that is local on your computer. And then we are going to jump right into it. So first off, I'm going to move over to my local project, which is right here. Cool. And as you can see, I already have the debug script in my package.json file. So there's a couple of things going on here. First off is that we are running node with the inspect command, right? Or inspect flag. Thank you. And passing it a path that we are building to the executable within the 8Base CLI package. So npm root dash g is going to locate or return the path where your npm package get globally stored. And then we are building the rest of the path to the 8Base CLI executable. And make sure that there's a space after that so that then once we run this command, we can still pass it the commands or the arguments that we're going to be giving to the 8Base command line that we are invoking and be able to invoke our functions appropriately. For that to work though, we're gonna first have to jump over to Chrome. And if we go to Chrome and we go to Chrome colon in slash slash inspect, uh, that will open up this menu where we can then select open dedicated dev tools for Node. It's gonna launch a window that then will actually capture our process or recognize our debugger when we run the command with the inspect flag. Right. So having that open, let's actually go back to our text editor and look at a really simple function that I put together called log today, where when it's invoked, it says the current time and it gets it from this time module, which we're not going to look at yet. Right. And so if I wanted to, I could just copy this command and invoke this locally. Right. And we can see that. Oh, okay, uh, result date time is function default one something. All right, so it's like returning a function. We, let's say that we don't really know what this time module is and we'd actually want to jump in and take a look at it. First off, what we can do is we're gonna add the debugger keyword at this point. So we go to debugger and we save it. And then now using the command that we created earlier, the script we used, created earlier, we're gonna say npm run debug, which is that script that we added to our package.json file, and then pass, pass the rest of the command as we usually would, which is invoke local, log today, and the path to the mock file. Let's execute that. We can see that it's listening, debugger, and it executed, but it didn't trigger. Why? Let's find out. I think the reason was is because we have to add a connection or specify connection, local host 9229, Let's try to add that one and let's try running that one more time. So save our file and run. Cool. So listening and cool. We got it this time. All right. So as we can see, it stopped in our code. However, one thing that is kind of odd is if you look at this code, it looks nothing like the code that we had written. And the reason is, is because when we invoke our functions locally, they actually get built and then we are debugging the built code, which would be the code that would go into production. So if I were to go to this uh, hidden folder, which is dot build and drill down into the tasks log today and look at our handler, you could see the code that gets generated there right and so there's a couple of things to note here that are important first off is that in here we might see that the we imp import the time module under the name time right however in the console if we were to go in here and say okay you know give me the time it would say that hey this is not here that's because it, we're assigning different names for imports requires and sometimes arguments uh, within the function 
So the best practice on debugging would be that, hey, if you know that you want to look at what's going on with time, just assign it a const value. So let's call it t equals time. Then, as long as your debugger runs after the declared variable, uh, while debugging, we'd be able to use the t variable to reference the module that we wanted to look into. All right, so then if we go back here, all right, we can actually do there and we can see, hey, time js.1. All right, so we see, look at here and we see that, oh, it's actually a function that got exported from that time module. And if we go there and we say time default, and then we execute it, we say, okay, well, this is the, this is the function that we'd have to be executing to get the time back. So if we go back to our simple function and we update it to where we say, hey, time, let's get your default function, or maybe we can, I think we can actually even just do this one second. No, not that. All right, time default that way. Cool. Let's remove our debugger. And let's say, detach the debugger. Oh, one second, let's go back to Chrome, go back to sources, exit the debugger that way, cool. Now go back here, awesome. And now let's just run it and invoke it. Oh, time JS one, okay, yeah. So let's do this, boom, boom, time. And we fixed it. So hopefully this gave you a good idea with a really simple example of how you can use debugger from within your custom functions while using Chrome DevTools. If you have any questions, please add them as comments to this video. Uh, definitely feel free to check out the documentation to learn a little bit more about debugging. However, looking forward to seeing you in future videos.